Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boobie! What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie, your favorite podcast that's uh, done in the front seat of a car while he's driving. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Back with another one. Uh, You already know, if you listen to the show at all, I'm a big Dario Argento fan, and for some reason, I just hadn't got around to this one on this show. I mean, I'm very familiar with this film. But uh, we are talking today about Inferno from 1980, considered a horror mystery. Yes, this is uh, Argento in his heydays, right? I mean, you you had the the, the Animal Trilogy, then you had, uh, of course, you know, Deep Red is just still incredible. Then you jump into the... Uh, the fever dream that is Suspiria, which this is the sequel to Suspiria, and you know, even though it's it's three years later, it seems like a lot of technology had changed um, as far as movie making, or there's just some things that Argento either just bypassed or did a different way, which that's what he was known for at the time. I mean, he was very very creative with his camera abilities, so. Uh, Yep, this one is not talked about as much, Um, but there's there's things in this one that, I don't know, I think are done better. Now, don't don't start getting mad at me just yet, but uh, all over as far as the technique and the filmmaking. You gotta remember when he made Suspiria, it was all new, brand new ideas, and if anything, Argento's, you know, guilty of trying to recapture lightning in a bottle and uh, maybe trying to make a trilogy out of something that maybe didn't need it especially when you look at the 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 last of the three it's like okay did we really need that so even though everybody is really hyped up about it but anyways that's for another story in another day uh let's uh talk a little bit about inferno it says rose elliott a young poet in Rome, uh, murdered after she reads a Latin book that tells her the, the supernatural story of the three mothers. Her brother Mark investigates the murder uh, after his friend Sarah is killed. Uh, he heads for New York. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a road movie. <laughs> no, it's not a road movie. Um, obviously, Dario Argento, I mean, again, uh, there was nobody on top of the game. You had Argento and maybe Carpenter at this point that were just hitting home runs, right? So, uh, a little bit about our... Wait a minute, let's go back. Let's talk about our reasons to watch. Why to watch, it says. Strange, mysterious, and horrific. I, I Seems like it says that on every movie I cover on here. That's the first thing it says. <laughs> Let's see, uh, beautifully filmed with plenty of gore, stylish camera work, lighting, and elaborate set pieces. That's Argento. I mean, you just you just gave a encyclopedia definition of, uh, of Dario Argento. It says, Inferno is a worthy follow-up to Superior, even though it's, uh, it is even more rel- reliant on atmospheric imagery than its predecessor. That's pretty true, uh, which may be a problem. So, and we'll talk about that. It's a striking piece of cinema, uh, if not quite as dizzyingly memorable as the director's earlier masterpiece. Yeah, I, I can, you know, it's been a while since I've visited this one. And um, I tell you, not seeing it after a while, with fresh eyes, it really makes you go, wow. I mean, there's some, some very striking imagery here that's really, really well done. So, anywho. We'll talk about that in a little bit. As far as our cast, we got, guess who? Daria Nicolodi in this, right? Who uh, plays uh, Elise. Apparently some rich lady that is living in, in this building. 
which this building is uh, what the whole story is based on. Uh, we've got Eleonora Georgie, who was in, let's see here, uh, The Sex Machine, all right. Uh, a bunch of a bunch of Italian films. <laughs> I thought she was in something I knew, but I guess not. Um, let's see. Irene Miracle is in this. She was in uh, Midnight Express from 1978. She was in Night Train Murders, which is another film that I need to cover on here. Uh, the Puppet Master. Walking Thunder. I mean, you got some high caliber movies here. <laughs> oh. And our our lead in this movie is Lee McCoskey. McCloskey. Lee McCloskey plays Mark. Uh, he's the guy we take the journey with. Uh, he's in uh, a bunch of movies I love. Fraternity Vacation. Uh, <laughs> I love Fraternity Vacation, which I've covered in the predecessor, the predecessor, the, what was it, Rad Movie Rama, yeah, that's the show that I did where I covered Fraternity Vacation, uh, great 80s flick, uh, if you didn't check that episode out, you should, he was in Hamburger the Movie, yo, <laughs> Hamburger the Motion Picture, sorry, uh, just one of the guys, I mean, come on, this, uh, just 80s gold here. Um, we can't go on without talking about Ania uh, Pironi in this who uh, is in several Argento flicks uh, strikingly beautiful lady right I mean and, and her role is always something where she really just stands out we got Gabrielle Lavia in this another Argento favorite from oh, uh, a ton of stuff uh, mainly for me Deep Red who, ironically, his name is, is Carlo in this movie, too. So, uh, uh, so there's another person. Uh, Veronica Lazara. Uh, I'm trying to see what all she was in. Let's see, uh... I was going to say the beyond. That's that's the one that I think of when when I think of this lady, Stendhal syndrome. So again, uh, more Italian horror, gold, right? So, anyways, let's let's get on to this. Um, we've got a young lady who is uh, living in this apartment building, and she goes to this little book short store that's right beside the building she's living in. And this book talks about the three mothers, which Suspiria is the first mother, and uh, which, you know, the house burnt down. But it's really about um, this gentleman named Varelli, uh, who was the architect that, that built this building. And apparently he built houses in different areas for the three mothers, right? So he was hired by the three mothers to build the one in Germany and the one in New York and where's the other one at? Is it Italy? Can't remember. Uh, but yeah. Um, so he's the architect but he's written these books and they kind of talk about secrets and stuff of the buildings and all this kind of stuff, right? So she gets enthralled with this book and strange things start happening and she starts following some clues that are in this book about the building that she's living in which is you know right next door to the bookstore and she goes into what would be like the basement of this building and there's this underwater scene she she goes down into the basement like i said and there's this hole in the floor and when she looks down in there you could tell this was an apartment building inside of it and, I mean, there's a chandelier, there's, but it's all underwater. It's completely filled with water. So all this is down sea level, I guess. And while she's messing around, looking down in there, she drops her keys and decides she has to dive in there to get her keys. Oh, and she does. 
I mean, you get this great underwater sequence. This is, this is you know, before the scene in uh, Big Trouble in Little China, which is instantly what I think of when I think of this scene, because it's, it's almost the same setup. Um, she goes down to get her keys, and all of a sudden there's a, a dead body floating around in there, right? Of course, it gets close to her. She can't get away from it. It's not grabbing her or anything, but it just seems to... Every time she flails at it, it just seems to keep getting closer at her, right? She finally gets out of there. She's all freaked out. Oh, what's going on here? Can't tell if there's a vehicle burning on the side of the road. Something's going on. That joker is smoking. Um, sorry, folks. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. This truck looks like it's on fire. Yes, that truck is definitely on fire. Wow, that's crazy. The whole hood of it's on fire. So, uh, yeah, that could be bad. That cop might want to pull his car back in case it gets to the gas lines and something really bad happens. Anywho, back to uh, back to the movie. What were we covering? Oh, yeah, Inferno. Uh, ironically, Inferno. Uh, the new Chevy Inferno. Drive one today. Um, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, it was a Chevy Blazer. <laughs> oh, man. Some jokes you just can't make up. They just they just happen naturally. Uh, I hope everybody's all right back there. I saw the, the lady, I guess, that was driving it was far away from it. So, Anywho, uh, this lady gets freaked out, calls her brother, who's in Italy, who's studying music. And there's a scene where he's at in a, in a college, uh, and he's sitting there, and he's going through this class with his girlfriend, who's also a student. And he gets a letter from his sister, and he's kind of reading it, but not really paying a whole lot of attention to it, because he's trying to take in this music to listen to. And while he's doing that, he looks across the room, and supposedly, I mean, again, Peroni's there, and like I said, starking features. But she's just sitting there. She don't have headphones like everybody else. She's just sitting there petting a cat. Which would, you know, pretty much get anybody's attention. And uh, she whispers something to him. And he's like, I, I can't tell what she's saying. Because obviously he's got headphones on. But then all of a sudden the windows open up. And the wind comes through. It's real strong and stuff. But he's the only one that feels the wind or anything. Nobody else even pays attention. So obviously she's casting some sort of spell or something. Well, as it turns out, she was supposed to be the third mother. So, uh, sadly, I don't think that ever came to fruition, but that's what they were setting up in this movie. Uh, during all this, you know, he kind of snaps out of it and uh, realizes, wow, that was really weird, and tries to go about his business. Well, his girlfriend sees the letter. She opens it up and starts reading about what his sister said. Now, she sends the letter saying please come here because there's something weird going on. I'm, I'm afraid for my life. So he's planning on going there. Well, she reads the stuff and she goes to the local library, finds the same book. And uh, she starts reading the book. It's funny that you read the first, I don't know, two or three paragraphs. And as soon as you read it, then all of a sudden you're on the hit list. And all of a sudden, the library is closed, but she's trapped in there. She can't get out. She goes downstairs. There's a guy that's boiling the glue to, you know, put these old books back together. She tries to get out, starts getting chased, and uh, gets knocked off. So, dude can't find his girlfriend. So, he decides to come to the States, find his sister. But by the time he gets there, she's no longer there either. So, now he's going to her apartment trying to figure out what's going on and he runs into Dario Nicolodi who lives next door or close to and they find out that you can speak in these certain rooms and you can hear it from room to room because there's these pipes that you know again all this intricate stuff that kind of ties back to Suspiria of how the girls could whisper in one room but it was being heard somewhere else so all this this architecture stuff is tied into all that stuff right the secrets of the of the how it was built and it kind of goes from there. Uh, you know, uh, Gabriel Avria in this, Carlos, or Carlo, uh, 
he's just a, a person that runs into a uh, dude's sister. And, again, she's frightened and asks if he would just stay and keep her company. And all of a sudden her electricity goes off. He goes to check on it and comes back with a knife through his throat. So, uh, or through his neck. And uh, so, I mean, there's, there's plenty of textbook Argento stuff. Um, I'm not going to give much more away on what happens here. But I do want to talk about the impression of seeing this again. And I love Suspiria. I do. Um, it's not for everybody. I mean, because it's a different form of storytelling, right? And again, it's it, the best way to describe it is a fever dream because a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense. And again, Argento even admitted himself. He was trying to recreate the magic that happened in that first movie. And it's not quite there, but I'll really tell you what I think it is. I think it's the fact of you're missing the Goblin soundtrack. And as much as I like Keith Emerson, I mean, one of the, one of the greatest keyboardists of our time, you know, it's just lacking that over-the-top pounding music that's in the original. I don't know why they didn't use it for this one. I, I guess because they thought that it was just solely for that movie. But man, there's some scenes that could have really been enhanced because there's a lot of times in this movie where it's just silent. And as as striking as the color play is, I mean, you're still dealing with shallow shadow and, and, and colored lights, right? Which I'm going to say he does even better in this movie. And again, he's, he's perfected this. He's the one that's, you know, made this a thing. Well, coming from his master, you know, you know Mario Bava, which ironically, Bava... Uh, Argento kind of called on to help him do some of the effects. He wasn't sure how to pull some of these things off, and sure enough, uh, Mario Bava did some of the effects for the movie. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, to me, you can tell it. It, it, it looks like his kind of work. So that's a fun fact, too, as well. But I, I really think it's Argento trying too hard to recapture it instead of, you know, just letting the creativity just flow. So I think it's the only thing that's really kind of a, a pullback from why this one do it doesn't do as well because there there is a lack of some storytelling here and it does just kind of jump from thing to thing in a way. But at the same time, so does Suspiria. Uh, but I think it, just the oddness of everything in Suspiria and that music, I think just really keeps you captivated because I think about the, the, the similarities in scenes, right? Because you've got uh, the doors opening at the airport in Suspiria and you focus on the cylinders, right? How Argento does all this focus stuff. Well, the same thing happens here, but it's a lock on a door, right? So again, he's, he's trying to pull those same things out and make it happen. Um, then you've got the, the, the wild scene of, uh, uh, what was his name? Kaz Kazanian? owns the bookstore. He looks like uh, Mo Howard from the Three Stooges. And uh, he's got this little bookstore and he's having trouble because I guess because of letting the book get out then he's getting hassled by the cats that belong to the the witches, I guess. And uh, they uh, start coming in and he warns one of the ladies there, hey, these cats come again, I'm going to call the police, whatever. Well, he ends up catching a bunch of them, puts them in the bag takes him out to the lake and pursues to just drown all the cats in a bag and he accidentally falls in the water and he's on uh, crutches so he's got obviously something wrong with him and he lands in the water which is not very deep where he's at ironically being that he just shoved a bunch of cats in there and they all drown um, he's laying there and the rats come out everywhere and rats come and kill him and then he's yelling for help and this guy runs out like he's going to help him but he brings a knife instead and pretty much chops dude's head off. So, I mean, there's all these just like Suspiria, right? Which you, when I think about that, I think about uh, the guy out in the park with the dog, right? The blind guy. And the dog jumps up and attacks him. So it's almost that same thing of, you know, the supernatural being able to control the animals and make them attack or whatever. You get that aspect as well. I think there's some camera work in this that is superior to Suspiria. Um 
I, I just and again, it may be a technology thing or just some new crafts that he come up with as he's been developing as he goes along with with his abilities with a camera. And uh, but yeah, there's some there's some fantastic shots in this, and the movie looks great. And uh, the ending to me is is just fantastic. And of course, as you can imagine, you know. It kind of ends up with the the same kind of scenario at the end of this one as in Suspiria where you kind of figure out one of the secrets, but in Argento fashion, you find out and then two seconds later, the building's burning down and the credits roll. So you kind of get that aspect of it too of textbook Argento. So I don't know. Uh, I think this movie has a lot going for it. Stylistically, it is fantastic. This is a great looking film. I think it's just lacking that unnerving that you get from the original soundtrack. Um, it's not as gory as the original, so maybe that, that kind of throws it off too. It's, you know, you think about that first death in Suspiria and there's nothing that even comes close to that in this movie. Uh, but there is some good stuff, right? So, like I said, it's kind of a trade-off. Do I think this is better than Suspiria? No. But I think there are things in this that are far superior to filmmaking in this movie than in, that's in Suspiria. With that being said, it's still a great Argento flick. So if you're lacking this movie in your collection, or if you haven't seen it, and you are familiar with Suspiria or Argento in general, uh, you have to see this one. You just have to. Uh, you've pretty much got you know, Italian horror movie royalty in this whole movie. So, uh, you know, give it a shot. Check it out. I'm going to give this a... I'll give it a four out of five. Um, even though I haven't revisited it in a while, it kind of makes me want to revisit it again because I'm seeing it with some different eyes now. And I think I appreciate it a lot more. I always did like it. But I think I like it even more now. So that says something. All right, folks, that's it for this one. Let me know what you think about this movie. And uh, if you got any suggestions for something else you want me to cover or something that I missed I didn't talk about on this, just let me know. All right, folks, that's it for this one. We will check you later.